my father's mother used to say, any town is sort of like a fruit tree. Some of the people are good, some of them are bad, just like the fruit on a tree. No matter if you go or stay, think of it like that till the day you die. Let it be your learning tree. My father didn't stay. He went out into the world and made it all his learning tree. Peter. My name is Gordon Parks, Jr. My father was born in Fort Scott, Kansas, 56 years ago. He's had a fascinating life, filled with all the tragedies and struggles that go along with being a black man in America. Roll, please. He has worked as a busboy, a piano player, a lumberjack, a waiter, a professional basketball player. And sometimes he had no work at all. He just wandered the country studying people. My father is a man of many, many talents, a Renaissance man. A man who's tried and succeeded at just about every art form that exists. And now he's made a major breakthrough for himself and for America because he is the first black director to be contracted by a major Hollywood studio to produce and direct a film. A film based on his own novel, The Learning Tree. I work on this film as a still photographer. Uh, has everybody been studying this really close? It's very difficult for me because you don't. You should, all of these things are clue. Each one should know exactly where they come in and do what they've got to do. Uh, Doc, this place reduces the punishment. They could come in after us. She said the head of the table. This time must really. Uncle Rob says this time must really be messed up now. Yeah, and I should come in immediately after she Sarah says that. Good shit tomorrow. This, tomorrow. this town must really be messed up now, Uncle Rob. Jack. Yeah. This How? place was due for some place. We're all sitting on the round right here. <clears throat> a new react. Chrissy enters with more food for the table. You can help me with the dishes tonight. It was the meat, I assume. That's enough, Chrissy. Go in the kitchen. No. Call her in. Boom! All right. Boy, get in here and stop your fooling before I tan your hide. Good. All right, now let's try to time this. Everybody remember that that cue, you know? Okay. Right on cue, and it's, it's got to move past. You really can't drag. Boom, 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 boom. Oh. Five or My father is a perfectionist. Never satisfied until every detail is right. React as though you are a man who, is, who, who has been through it. Thank you. Thank you. Your, 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 your reaction seem a little too violent. I see. And, and then read the papers or you're reading one column rather than shifting around. And use the source of light right. from here. Yeah. Okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, Uncle Rob, uh, did you sort of find your way there to self-help you enough to the chair? 
A little more assistance. Uh, Estelle? Yes. When you ask Uncle Rob to come to the chair, yes. uh, stay with him a little longer. Then you know he's there. Then you can leave. All right. But be sure that he's he's there. Yeah. Okay. He kind of he was sort of floating on his own that time. Okay. Kyle, you can really return still. Where's Kyle? You're right here. Yeah, you can return a little quicker there. You're a little, okay. Still holding up two seconds too long. Constant rehearsal, little bits of improvisation make the difference between a dull scene and an interesting, believable one. You're going with his, his balling out. We want to see you as he's balling you out. Come here. Oh, OK. All right? All right, let's shoot it now. I'd like you to meet my father, some of the people who work with him. Well, the actual experience is what I was working from, uh, my actual childhood in Kansas. And I suppose uh, in the process, uh, one tends to create new experiences. Play gets, sort of gets away with you, a motion picture gets away with you. Sometimes a character leads you into different avenues, but mostly it was uh, taken from the experience in Kansas. It's very interesting how I came to get the part. Stell Evans betrays my father's mother. After reading Mr. Park's book, The Learning Tree, I was so very much interested in it that I wrote him a letter and asked him that if he ever made a picture of the learning tree I would like to be considered for the role of Sarah his mother I had for, uh, lost the letter and I never answered it and uh, a couple of years later uh, I went to a matinee on Sunday in New York City, and uh, I happened to see this woman on stage, and I said to myself, well, there's Sarah Winger. Mr. Fox came backstage, and of course, I was delighted when he was introduced as Gordon Parks. And I thought he had come in uh, answer to my letter. She sort of teared up and says, oh, at last you've come. And I said, oh, uh, I didn't uh, know that you knew me. But he told me that as far as he was concerned, I was Sarah in his learning tree. And so she was overjoyed, and I was too. And I think it was a natural thing for her to play the role. She looked so much like my mother. And many of her actions are, are very much like those of my mother. It was as if we were seeking each other without really knowing. In fact, it casts sort of a weird spell over me sometimes when I see her reacting to the, the roles and the lines. And uh, she was very uh, discreet about not coming out uh, into view the day we uh, shot her funeral. And she hid behind a truck somewhere. So that, no, there was a tremendous mood there that morning. Everyone, uh, you'd thought that there actually was a real burial there. People were talking very quietly. And uh, it was a a very good morning for it because it was sort of foggy and misty. Peter. All right, uh, ready to do Action, Prissy. Was you scared, Newt? No. If you'd been chopping wood like you were supposed to, you wouldn't have been in such a mess. Be quiet and set the table, girl. You were lucky to be home instead of gallivant somewhere. Mm. Uh, Mama! You can't get over that book of savvy. Kick this kid out in a storm like that. Sit here, Rob. You, you can help. Huh? Can I give the orders around here, Miss Prissy? Each going straight to bed after supper. No, you can help me with the dishes. That's enough, Prissy. Stop your fooling before I turn your hide. Bless us, O Lord, for this food we are about to receive. And we thank thee, O Lord, for saving us from the storm. Thank you. Been with for that for two months. <laughs> I think that you know, certainly the eyes of the of the industry are on, a, on the learning tree picture and the 
the crew and so forth and so on. I think that it'll help and certainly uh, it will influence uh, other companies, uh, big, uh, big motion picture industries, to uh, consider black directors, uh, black producers, and also have an influence on the type of roles that uh, they will be giving to Negroes from now on. Scene 631, take one. The movie is about my father's boyhood in Kansas in the 1920s. It's about people who live in a small town, people from all walks of life who are good, bad, and indifferent. There's death and violence in this film. There's also a great deal of love and understanding and learning. Elizabeth Parks, my stepmother. I think anyone being married to Gordon would have the usual problems that arise from being a stepmother. Uh, I'm not so sure I've gone through the gamut of those problems because I have known the children whom are my contemporaries practically all my life. The family consists of three children, a son, Gordon Jr., then there's Tony, uh, the daughter, who's a very gifted musician, and our youngest son, David, is in college. He, too, wants to be a photographer, and he has had a book published called G.I. Diary. Uh, also, it was excerpted in, uh, in Look Magazine and he has a few more years of college to go. And then, of course, there's the youngest one, of which is very dear to me since it's my first child. The music that I've heard all my life, the hymns in church, my experience in terms of writing uh, classical music are, for that instance, like Chappie Logan's Blues, uh, my experience from playing in houses of prostitution when I was a kid, uh, playing the piano, uh, all the experiences that I knew as a boy now come out in the music. The director of photography, working closely with the head lighting man, was paint with light and shadow to create a mood, to bring to life a director's vision. A very strange moment for me during the filming of this, especially some of the footage I saw last night of my mother's death, uh, and uh, especially her scene uh, when they bury her, and also the, the more nostalgic, uh, playful things of the riverbanks and where we used to swim as kids, and where I actually saw Captain Tuck shot in the water by the sheriff. These things, uh, seeing the funeral homes, and which are still there in Kansas, is bound to provoke some sort of nostalgic emotion. I don't know how the director can concentrate on performances, surrounded by the hustle and bustle of production. But my father seems able to stay cool and do his job. Watch your feet. Okay, come on in. Push them. Here's the floor up, Mark. Kyle Johnson portrays my father as a boy. I'm, I'm sure that to a greater or lesser extent, every boy has gone through some of the things that he went through. And that's partly just playing myself. So his direction is, is more towards the technical things. I think that uh, 
on the first film, I have to take it a little easy, learn the craft well before I strike out and do a lot of, uh, you know, abstract things. You learn to rely on your cameraman, a good cameraman like Bernie Guffey, and is also his operator like uh, uh, Klein. Uh, they get to know you. They they've seen all my still pictures. Uh, they know pretty much what sh what you want, and they try very hard to get it. Sometimes they get things that I don't expect to get, a little better than what I expect sometimes. So I'm very confident uh, when they're working before the camera. I, in fact, I, I watch the run through sometimes. I, I get on the camera and I write it and I see exactly what they're after. And nine times out of 10, they get exactly what I saw when I looked in the camera. Burnett Guffey, director of photography. Gordon's wonderful because he's the man that knows photography and this is a great experience because he appreciates good photography and he and I have seen eye to eye through the whole production. As a matter of fact, I've had so much liberty that it almost scares me, you know? Experience that I've had as a still photographer has certainly been a big help to me in motion pictures because without that, I would have suffered when it in terms of color, in terms of composition, in terms of movement, in terms of drama. Because the stories that I've done mostly for Life magazine have been stories that dealt with human emotions. And many of those stories calls for you watching uh, the emotions of people and recording them. <laughs> Myra Waters portrays my father's girlfriend. And one thing about uh, Mr. Parks, he he gave the people that didn't, didn't have names a chance, and uh, he didn't go for the the, the uh, made actor, black actor. So we have uh, 20 more black actors who will be exposed. Both uh, Kenny Hyman and myself uh, uh, made every effort we could to get as many black people in the crew as possible. And I think we, in that instance, we have sort of set precedence by having more black crew people uh, than any other film so far in the history of the industry. Gene Simpson, electrician. In the last five years, there has been valid attempts to integrate thoroughly the major crafts within the structure of the studio environment. The problems that's going to confront the technicians that were on this crew now, uh, it's kind of hard to say because there isn't a Gordon Parks every day to more or less usher or use his position as an avenue to help the black man in this thing. Now, we're hoping that <clears throat> our work and the contributions we did make to the filming of this picture will be such that it will warrant other lucrative jobs, etc. With the learning tree, they took a thoroughly integrated crew and cast, mixed them in a environment that was more or less designed to <clears throat> throw them together in a sense that they could work together, they could more or less socialize together, they could live together in a homogeneous atmosphere, you might say, that created a feeling of goodwill, you might say. Keith Lundy, painter. My job as a painter well, we're the ones who have the dirtiest job, uh, but I believe the most interesting. Um, for example, this set. Um, this is what is known as aging, uh, where we uh, take various shades of, of paint and um, put dust, uh, rust, uh, water runs, and then the special effects guys, such as this fellow here, um, is the one who puts all the cobwebs um, to make it look dusty and what have you. I'm very jealous of my time with Gordon because he is so busy. He is so involved in so many projects. And when he does come home, I want very much to be with him. Which is not getting out of here. I know you don't want to Well, sorry. Someone please get a sister to cut my hair. A beret is in order. 
beautiful. The boy off the set this evening was in a closed set. Big Maybell seduction scene. Have a few problems with it. Which one? Well, the biggest problem is getting Big Maybell to take clothes off. <laughs> Second problem is to get a Everyone off the, off the set. Getting men off the set. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to shoot it inside of a dream sequence. Shoot it two ways. Shoot it but in slow motion. Shoot it normal speed. And uh, be quite a bit out of focus. But it should be a beautiful scene. Lots of fun. I'll try. And then all she has to do then is reach up and grab the thing up there. Yeah. Right. And then this part of the floor can be taken up, right? Oh, if you want to. Because yeah, I mean, when you want to shoot your low shots. Oh, you know, well, we can get right on the floor level. I think we're through with the upshots already, yeah. aren't we? Well, the, the problem is, uh, the, I think the way uh, Conrad said, he says, start to die. That you, you don't get a feeling of a point of view, his point of view, because it's, it's, she's looking beyond here. Well, the only thing I would do then is just have her look right in the lens. Look right in the lens. Yeah. So, well, I call them that, I, what I'm trying to figure out, how I can drop them so that you can get to them so she can look right in the lens. So if I well, drop them... Uh, what we'll have to do is put some of that ceiling back up, which I've now taken out for this lighting. Right. So maybe we could do that later. Oh, yeah. Uh, Good. Do the master. Okay. Okay? Right. So I'll drop them right here. Yeah, right some of them will found. For him too. Right. Now, one is gonna, would you rather him drop his head toward the window or away from the window? Uh, it's a better light for you away from the window. I think so. All right, so I'll drop him away from you. Okay. All right. You undress Then you undress yourself. Take the blanket. Okay. Now I'm thinking of the other version of you just on top of it. You didn't pull the blanket over you, which is the easier for you to do, actually. Just covering your body with his. Because I think that's the easiest thing. Instead of rolling him over all that, you know, I've asked 80 women, they all said that, but only one. I think she was still shooting for me. When I take off the dress, I won't have the blanket over me, will I? No. If this lighting is like mine, so there's one that you're almost in the dark. It's all in the exposed. The only light hitting you is the light from this one. It's almost like figures in the dark. Okay, I'll try to reach it on the other side. Creating realistic effects of nature, like a tornado or a thunderstorm, is a specialty that Hollywood technicians are masters of. writes poetry and makes film, does still photography, writes books, composes music. And to me, uh, it's given me an awful lot of incentive and to go on and not just apply myself in one area, but in many areas. And I think that a lot of people who are around him have also gotten this sort of rhythm about themselves of not only doing one thing, but doing many things.
Well, I uh, have a novel, another novel to write uh, for Harper and Row. I'm, I'm supposed to finish a, another a third part of the uh, autobiography, and I'm supposed to uh, uh, finish uh, 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 the story on Flavio, which is the little boy I brought from Brazil in 1963, I think it was. Uh, then I'm doing a concerto for uh, cello and orchestra for Bernard Greenhouse, who is a very fine cellist. And I expect to be doing motion pictures from now on. <laughs>